college uh, list of uh, this jo hai na presentation i think every project that we start with we always get your blessings in that and you always take out some time to uh, train our students for the same sure. so these students ma'am have taken admission in hansraj college digital marketing professional course so hansraj college has started this initiative uh, of add on courses for their students and for the outside students also who wants to get some skills apart from their regular degree programs so these students have trusted us uh, in the covid period also and uh, we are giving them lot many uh, interesting workshops uh, for that uh, and we will be starting content of them uh, very soon and uh, many students are today connected through uh, zoom also through youtube also through facebook live streaming also i would request every student to please click on your switch on your camera and regarding bhavleen ma'am i would like to say that she has a really vast experience more than of 20 years in the corporate training and consulting uh, she has been associated with google and fikki and she has till now trained more than 101 brands some of the prominent names i would like to mention are honda cii and uh, she is also a certified uh, uh, a person in uh, expert in artificial intelligence and she's been associated uh, with us i think since more than 5 years and every batch of digital marketing is incomplete without her presence so i welcome you ma'am again thank you so much to you it was a very humble introduction thank you very much over to you you can please take forward sure ma'am but i have lost the site to uh, the screen wherein i can see the students i think i'll have to log out and then join in again not an issue not an issue i'll you just can... log out and then just come in in a second okay. we are waiting yes ma'am Good morning, everyone. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Great. So, I request all of you to have your cameras on. As I can see, most of you have your cameras on, but uh, some of you still do not. So, it would be really nice, you know, if we could interact and see each other while we conduct this session. So, um, it's very nice to interact with you know students of Hansraj College. uh because i also have a background in delhi university i did my graduation from st stephens so that was in chemistry so i've always been very fond of delhi university and after a very long time you know i'm getting to interact with students of uh, du college so it's really amazing and uh, i also would request all of you to be interactive in the session the topic is very very interactive in nature so it's not that you know it will be a one sided communication that's the reason you know i wanted to have all the cameras on so that you know i can see you all side by side also and uh, if you have a doubt or anything so you can interrupt me one by one and we can discuss at the end of the session however we will have a doubts clearing session also uh, i will not be able to check your chats 
while I am uh, teaching. So if you send me a query on the chat, I'm sorry, it might get missed. So the better way would be to raise your hand, not through a reaction, but in the camera so that I can see. And if I still cannot see, you know, because only limited number of people we can see on the screen, then you can interrupt me by saying, excuse me, ma'am, okay? So should we start with the session? So the session is social media, the future of business. Just, yeah, Ekta, you want to say something? Okay, okay, fine. So uh, first of all, you know, you guys need to raise your hands and tell me how many of you think uh, that social media is actually the future of business. Indrapreet, Sharon, Nikita, Nitika, Anish, Manchika. Okay. Rahul, Sharma. Okay. So few of you, Keshav and uh, Rohan. Uh, okay. So a very few of you, you know, at the beginning of the session feel that social media is, you know, the future of business. So I will ask this question again at the end of the session. So let's see, you know, if others also change their mind. Okay. And uh, what is the total population of the world? Anyone knows? No. Okay. So the total population of the world is 7 billion. Okay. And you know, 3.8 billion people, which is more than half of the world population is and present India. on uh, one or the other form of social media. Okay, so the total population of the world is 7 billion and out of 7 billion, 3.8 billion, you know, which is more than 50% uh, of the world population is actually present on one or the other platform of social media. So the scope that, you know, we have on social media is immense. Now, uh, I want to ask this very basic question. How many of you have uh, at least one social media account and you are active on it? It could be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Okay. And uh, how many of you have more than two social media accounts? Yeah, most of you. So, you know, uh, my first suggestion to everyone would be that, you know, if you are not active on social media, please be. Okay. And... Uh, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. You know, it leads to depression. We'll discuss all of these aspects. Good thing or a bad thing is a very long debate, you know, which can go on for eternity. But uh, the only point that I'm trying to make here is that if there is a place in the world where everyone is present, you have to be present too. Yes, you know, as a recruiter, you know, let me talk to you as a recruiter for five minutes and not as a faculty. As a recruiter, you know, the place where today, whether or not you like it, but today, the place where I'm going to be making up my mind, whether I like you or not, as my prospect employee is not social media, it's social media and not your hard copy resume, not your PDFs. The very absence from social media in itself, you know, is indicative of someone being less competitive and someone being scared of online presence, where the future is going. I'm not saying that you're not competitive if you're not on social media, but I'm saying is that's the impression. It could be a wrong impression. I totally, totally agree, but this is the impression which goes out. And I'm also one of very active recruiters. And let me tell you, yes, we do get this impression. Okay, so let's start with the presentation and you guys can interrupt me in between whenever you want and uh, Let's see. Ready for the presentation, everyone? Okay, just give me a second. I'll just share my screen with all of you. Okay, I don't have rights to share my screen. Just give me a second. Can you see my screen, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
yes okay. ma'am great okay fine that's good so the topic which we are going to be discussing today is social media the future of business now we all know what is social media but you know sometimes it's very important to acknowledge formally what is a social media because that is not something that we have really thought about ever you know whenever we say social media so it's like facebook you know just like what is 2 minutes noodle it's maggi you know so similarly but what is social media is very important for all of us to understand that it is a collective term which we use for websites and applications which focus on communication community based input interaction content sharing and collaboration and different types of social media are normally dedicated to forums and social networking and social bookmarking and micro blogging etc so twitter for example you know is a micro blogging website yes or no everyone yeah okay okay so tell me what do you people think which platform in the world has got maximum number of uh, social media users okay so what is facebook okay what about instagram are you surya what did you say anyone else facebook really okay so let's have a look so this is the global social networks ranked by a uh, number of users you know in 2020 so this is the latest data which is available so it's definitely facebook followed by you know youtube whatsapp facebook messenger wechat we can leave because we are not using it instagram tiktok and you know what has happened to tiktok reddit pinterest and twitter all right so you know these are uh, you know chronology wise these are the channels you know which see maximum number of users obviously one user can have more than one account on one channel also and multiple channels also but this is the population you know and uh, see facebook 2603 million you know which is 2.6 billion which is like one third of the world population almost you know so this is the kind of uh, Okay, so you know what are the various purposes for which uh, millennials use social media? So when I say millennials, uh, what I mean is the people who are born from nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety five. So are you guys millennials or are you even younger than that? Born after nineteen ninety five or before? After ninety five. after so you are generation z and i am a millennial so let's see you know what uh, generation z is giving us lot of trouble actually but that's a separate topic of discussion but uh, let's see you know rohan why are you scribbling on my screen that was uh, mr sorry ma'am yeah. so what are the various purposes for which millennials you know let's see it's a very interesting study though most of you would be knowing the answers to this but still let's have a look so the 10 uh you know, rohan can you please erase this red line so the top motivations for using social media you know probably would be to stay in touch with my friends yeah that was the primary objective for which facebook was actually incepted to stay up to date with news and current events now tell me how many of you uh, read news and current events on social media raise your hands anish okay two part only two of you me really? also social me four raise your hands okay because the five good it's a great place to actually read news and you know have, obviously it's flooded with fake news also totally to which i totally agree but then again there are authentic communities and authentic web pages also you know which are there and which could be very useful for reading news and stuff like that to fill up spare time so this definitely i think some school students have answered because once you graduate you don't have any spare time then you have because of my friends okay general networking entertaining content how many of you like to entertain yourself with all these memes and all which go around in social media yes lot of you okay to share photos and videos how many of us like doing that yes five of you okay to share my opinion now tell me how many of you actually go to social media to share an opinion no one 
One, four. Okay, four. I have four raised hands. Three, four. Okay. So, you know, there's so much which is happening around you, you know, from GDP to the pandemic and to the very tragic Sushant Singh Rajput case to the Bollywood mafia to the drug peddling, you know. So how many of you have given opinions on social media? Done? Any one of you? Written down something about any of these issues? GDP, economy, Bollywood, nothing. You must do that. It's a great way to project your personality, which tomorrow, you know, can be very visible to the right people. You know, how many of you join social media to meet new people? Harshit, okay. One person, that's it. Okay, three participants. To find products. Now tell me, this is my area of focus actually. To, for today's discussion, how many of you actually go to social media to find good products and services? I'm not talking about purchasing products and services, but at least, you know, how many of you go there for looking at what are the different kinds of uh, products and services which are coming in there? Four. That's it. Oh, I expected much better response to this. Okay. So let's move forward. Social media definitely has evolved a great deal in the last decade, you know, it has immensely, immensely evolved. And because, you know, it was actually started as a channel of communication, but today it is a fully fledged channel through which business is being done. And in the future, the business will be done through social media. So, you know how it will be done. I will be discussing it in a lot of detail as we move forward. But uh, yes, you, I'm sure everyone agrees with me when I say that social media has really evolved in the past decade. So what was seen as a communication channel between friends is now comprised of a multi-billion dollar platforms that have incredible influence on people's life. So uh, just think and answer that how many of you think that, you know, social media does have an influence on your life? It could be positive influence, it could be negative influence, but how many of you think that, yes, it does have an influence on my life? Raise your hand. Rishabh? two, three, four, come on, come on, five, okay, that's it. Okay, let's see. So let us have a look at where actually social media is, uh, you know, okay, Umang also believes that. So where is social media actually heading? So let's have a look at that. Tell me how many of you like to watch videos? on social media, YouTube, Vimeo, anywhere, you know, I mean, even on Facebook, there's so much uh, video content, Instagram is full. And to, now we have reels on Instagram, you know, which is a good competition for TikTok. So how many of you uh, like to watch videos? Raise your hands, give me reactions, okay? So that I can count the number of people. Five, six, seven, okay. So, Experts say that video is the future of social media and uh, not just social media, it is the future of business. Video marketing is the future of business and trust me, I would completely and completely vouch for this, totally. Okay, so let's look at a couple of reasons here that according to Adobe, you know, 52% of marketing uh, professionals say that video is the form of marketing, you know, which is generating the best ROI. ROI is return on investment. So how much revenue or how much profit, you know, you are getting out of one channel after investing into it is actually uh, ROI. So according to Adobe, 52% of marketing professionals say that the best ROI, you know, which they are able to get is through the videos that they post on social media. And the most important thing is that experts estimate that this percentage will only increase in the future. So if a channel of marketing is, uh, okay, two uh, people raise their hand. Uh, do you guys have a question? Just let me come to all of you. Yeah, someone raised their hands. Do you people have questions for me? Is there a question? No, okay. So uh, video marketing, you know, 
so like i said is like really picking up and uh, it is giving best return on investment for any form of digital media marketing and experts feel that you know this is actually uh, going to only increase in the future so i'm going to show you some very interesting videos right now of two brands one is gopro you know what is gopro yes most of you know but i will anyways explain and one is coca cola how many of you know what is coca cola everyone everyone okay good first let's have a look at the video of coca cola that how they are doing video marketing and how successful they were on relaunching diet coke which was a complete failure product and then they did video marketing for it using augmented reality and when they did video marketing for it using augmented reality it became a profitable product so this is the power of video marketing so i'm going to show you this video just give me a second i'll just share my screen with you again guys can you see my screen no ma'am um, okay good so you were not supposed to see it also just give me a second so now i'm sharing my screen and i'll show you this video just hang on can you see my screen Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 ma'am. Can you see? This ad very much. Please. Created an entire campaign that they can literally drink. First, we built a billboard that served real Coke Zero to thousands of fans. Then. Coke Zero to people all over the country. Your TV is about to pour you a Coke Zero. This is a drinkable commercial. We partnered with Shazam and created a new way of using their technology. Shazam now to drink. By Shazamming the spot, the Coke Zero from the screen was poured right into people's phones, whether they were at home, at a concert, or among 80,000 people at the NCAA final game. Every interaction ended with a free Coke Zero that could be redeemed at major retail stores across the U.S. Even when there was no screen, we poured Coke Zero using just sound. From ads that became cups to flyers that became straws to tweets that poured Coke Zeros in 140 characters. drinkable posters that you Shazam to turn people's phones into digital straws. Every single ad put a Coke Zero in people's hands. So next time you're thirsty, drink it out. So did you guys see that commercial? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Did you like the commercial? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So what was this commercial telling? Anyone would want to attempt this question? What was this commercial actually telling us? Vanchika, you want to try? Vanchika Gaur? no and we can say that they are trying to uh, they are trying to build a opinion that uh, the coke zero is equally important like which we matlab like coke so they are showing the importance of their product in the market basically nah. so when vanshika says that they are trying the you know showing the importance of their product in the market i totally agree to her however let me explain to her you a little more in detail okay so you know when coke zero was launched you know it was not that coke zero was instantly a good product considered to be a good product and it was a hit with the target audience it was not it was a flop so coke did market research and it tried you know to find out 
that why is that people are not liking coke zero even though we are claiming that it has no calories in it so after research they got to know that they did not like the taste of the drink so they took opinions that what is that in the taste that you are not liking so after taking that feedback they made all those changes in their cold drink now the problem was they have spent billion dollars on market research and on changing the entire product formula also to revamp the drink you know together but then also people are not trying it you know because they tried it first they did not like it they gave feedback feedback was inculcated into the drink but second time no one wanted to try it so till the time they did not try it how would they come to know that this is an improved version so coca cola came up with this virtual reality uh, augmented reality marketing campaign in which is if you see if you saw in the advertisement that you know virtually you could drink did you see that virtually so what they did was that they started giving coupons and barcodes and for every coupon and barcode a person will get a free drink you know and we know that this is a very basic human nature that okay as long as it is free and i have rejected the product i'll still buy it because it's free so we forget that we rejected it earlier so people started buying collecting all those coupons and they gave pamphlets and flyers and newspaper ads and everything people started collecting the free samples plus the free samples they could use this virtual straw from the play store and they could play this game that i am virtually drinking the cold drink so when people you know started drinking coca cola zero for the second time they started liking the taste because the improvements were made as per their suggestions and today you know that coke zero is a profitable product and this commercial is 5 years ago it's a 5 years old commercial so this was the reason you know you know the video marketing the kind of impact it has print or you know news feeds you know they they cannot have so did you guys understand this commercial what it was what were they projecting okay so i'll similarly show you the power of video marketing you know which is being exploited by gopro so for people who do not know gopro is a brand which makes very advanced cameras you know and basically they position their products as cameras you know which can capture adventurous activities with lot of precision and they apply video marketing very very well so let me just show you one more video of gopro and you see how gopro also taps video marketing so supremely well okay so just give me a second you guys can't see my screen right no ma'am okay Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen now, and just have a look at this GoPro video. Can you see my screen now, everyone? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Made ma with a GoPro camera, okay? I'm video start again.
so you know if there is an organization you know which is dealing in the sales of high tech cameras you know can you think there could be better way of proving the technological advancement of your camera than this video as a marketing person let me tell you i don't think so that you could show the caliber of a camera in a better way than this you know again they are uh, capturing the power of video marketing through social media and getting back to my presentation i'll just talk a little bit about gopro and uh, just let me share my screen with all of you can you see my screen everyone yes yes, yes ma'am ma So we were talking about video marketing, and we have taken the example of GoPro, the video you have already seen. So taking example of GoPro, you know, which manufactures cameras which are based uh, for action-based lifestyles, and they have mastered the art art of branded and user-generated videos. Their YouTube videos YouTube channel has almost six million subscribers. and that includes incredible goat adventure videos and skiing snowboarding hiking and more all captured on their cameras and these videos can run in a length of 1.5 minutes to 30 minutes alongside user generated content thereby creating a huge engagement for these people so you know i am sure you will remember this video for a very long time because it does have that kind of impact you know which gopro wants to create through video marketing so that is why we say you know that video marketing comes as a very handy tool for social media okay okay the second thing which is very very important uh, for social media is ephemeral content and storytelling so what do you guys understand by ephemeral content so have you guys heard of ephemeral word before this no okay so ephemeral content is a content you know which is very short lived on a particular platform so for example you know today we have a lot of stories instagram stories and snapchat and facebook and whatsapp so these you know stories you know they stay for just 24 hours and after which they disappear on their own in instagram they go into their archive in, in your archive but otherwise you know they disappear after 24 hours so uh, this kind of content you know which is very short lived on a particular medium is known as ephemeral content so how many of you uh, like watching stories uh, on instagram and whatsapp and facebook yes so umangre has raised the hand what about others no one else two more participants three um, can you repeat this again class show short jump so uh, ephemeral content is a content which is very short lived you know which has a very short life span so for example you know instagram stories if i refer to so these But, instagram stories you know they are there on instagram only for 24 hours and after 24 hours they disappear so a content you know which is very short lived it is known as ephemeral content and the best uh, you know example of ephemeral content is stories you know whether it is facebook story or whatsapp or snapchat or instagram because they all uh, you know uh, Uh, kind of disappear after twenty four hours. So is it clear, Jatin? Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. No worries. Dimanya, you raise your hand. You want to ask something? Uh, ma'am, uh, I have a doubt. I want to ask. Just like we say, abhi twenty four hours duration stories. Comes under ephemeral content. So the time duration of that story, like. Two second feature and uh, uh, just like YouTube and you know, YouTube also we can put up stories and now we have reels. So that feature also come into ephemeral content yes, or only does. the twenty four hours feature. No, twenty four hours is the maximum bracket that I am talking about. The reels and all, all of this is ephemeral content. I'll tell you what model, you know, though it was not a part of this discussion, but since you have raised this, I would like to talk about it. So you know, you guys know what a jellyfish is, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So a jellyfish, you know, has a memory, you know, has a retention of just five seconds. Okay. So this ephemeral content. is based upon a jellyfish model that going downwards you know from millennials to generation z the retention is decreasing 
okay so because the retention is decreasing so the content which is short and short lived resonates better with the customers so this is the idea behind ephemeral content which is a jellyfish model do you guys understand dimanya yes ma'am yeah. great so now let's talk about this ephemeral content what is ephemeral content we have discussed and the latest form which is storytelling you know it is very favorite of influencers and brands and users and this content remains there on a particular platform for only 24 hours like we have discussed and uh, this form of storytelling is very different from the storytelling on other traditional forms of social media because the con uh, content is less curated and it is more engaging so how these stories are engaging i'm just going to discuss with all of you in uh, in a second from now so you know uh, instagram gifs and reels and everything you know it is definitely more engaging than the storytelling which was done initially where in the brands used to put very very long posts on social media which most of the people would not land up reading so stories are overtaking the regular grid activity yes definitely the regular long posts that i was talking to you about you know which people put on facebook or people put on instagram so you know these long put uh, long posts are getting replaced by these stories because the engagement rate is very very high so you know um, stories started out on snapchat we all know that right so snapchat was the first uh, social media platform to have ever come out you know with a feature like stories but uh, the foolishness i would rather say that snapchat did was that it never kind of patented its stories as a result of which today snapchat stories are less popular than instagram stories you know because this was not a very forward thinking on the part of snapchat you know because the minute snapchat came out with these stories it was so popular in the target audience so popular that it should have ideally you know kind of patented its product but it did not and today we know that instagram stories are much more popular than any of the other platforms so stories started on snapchat however facebook instagram whatsapp quickly adopted this feature too and these primarily vertical stories usually last for 24 hours and give people tremendous opportunity to uh, you know create different kinds of content so initially you know when these stories started you could just post pictures or write quotes but today you know you can put reels in your stories today you put embed small videos in your stories uh, polling in the you know, instagram poll you know it is such a instagram quiz through a story so there's so many features you know which you can do very vibrantly well using these stories as a feature and uh, you know about 500 people 500 million people watch instagram stories every single day and facebook stories can also be seen on messenger and facebook allows you to see stories on desktop as well so you know you have to understand that 500 million people watch instagram stories every single day now this is a huge figure and they are highly engaging due to their interactive nature uh they have caught the attention of millennials and as many as 60% of millennials you know they watch stories on instagram 53% on snapchat and 48% on facebook so this is the power of stories and uh, due to this level of engagement they have become a very popular marketing tool for brands and they are also very easy to create you know that creating story is very easy and uh, the main reason for the success is that they are not too long and so this makes it very convenient for people to watch stories now uh, let me show you a few stories um which uh, just give me a second i'll share my screen with you okay so very instagram is more uh, better than other apps because it will be monetizing some uh, some days So I heard Instagram about it on Google. That? I'm I'm saying that Instagram is more better than other apps. Instagram, okay. So it's again a matter because, uh, yeah, because it will be monetized in some days. So where uh, whenever we post on IGTV something, so we will get charges after a month. See, that's a part of affiliate marketing, but uh, it's not as simple as it looks like. That the minute you post about a product or you promote a product on IGTV, and you will be paid for it. it is a very very performance based model and it happens only when a sales happen 
so no, it will uh, it becomes like a youtube system because uh, whenever we post something and we are getting a lots of reach on there Okay, so, so we will get we will get paid for it from Instagram officially. They will uh, give us so money. So there are little more nitty gritties here, which we need to understand is that the latest Instagram algorithm is such that your followers will start reducing automatically. Has anyone till now observed? Uh, you know, uh, uh, these followers getting reduced on Instagram? Yes, ma'am. Lots of yes, ma'am. Yes. Because yes, it's the non uh, non active participants have been declined. Without doing anything, your followers are getting reduced. This is according to the latest Instagram algorithm, and based and this algorithm has been rolled out so as they don't have to pay you on the basis of number of subscribers or the number of people who follow you or the number of followers you have. Yeah. So to get rid of that monetary method is why you know the followers for everyone, including Bollywood celebrities and politicians, put together. You know. The number of followers are decreasing so much is because of the latest Instagram. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure if the people are keeping track of their followers, but whenever you wake up, you would have realized that five six followers are gone every day. You may get another two today, but you will lose five tomorrow. So that is because of this algorithm. You know, because it is trying to change its monetization policies, and uh, a lot yeah. will depend upon affiliate marketing and not. Uh, just Instagram paying you on the basis of followers and subscribers, so it's very soon going to get rid of this kind of a business model. It has almost gotten rid of the business model, and this is the reason. You know, you remember, pehle we used to see the number of likes on a particular post. Now we are not able to see number of people who have liked it. It comes as others. Yeah. Yes. So what is the reason that Instagram is making so many changes? Is that first you could see that you know fifty one people like this post, but today you see one name and others. So it is not. I mean, others cannot see how many people have liked your post, so that you, they don't have to monetize that post because that post has got like thousand likes or two thousand likes. So a lot of changes are happening in the monetization models. This is the reason Instagram is coming up with such major and such frequent changes. So is it clear to everyone? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And now Twitter yes, has also started the stories. Uh, Twitter, yeah, even LinkedIn has rolled out a press release. You know that we will be coming up with stories. So Twitter and LinkedIn are very different forms of social media. So we'll have to wait and watch that how successful it becomes with them. Uh, but uh, definitely, you know, the strong competition for stories is amongst uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat and uh, WhatsApp. So let's. Yeah, but you know, on uh, selling product like. Uh, uh, For uh, gaining a weight or uh, this kind of product like uh, uh, synthols or mass gainer, this kind of product, gym product, we can't not sell on uh, Instagram because it's uh, through of online. And shoes and uh, hookah, cigarettes, types so of things we can't not sell there. So now we were talking about stories. So I have opened uh, this Facebook page of Nike. And Nika has, a, you know, a story posted here. So let's have a look at Nika's story. You all can see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you see, it is obviously promoting cosmetic products. And uh, what I wanted to actually show you is that. So this is see more. So when you click on see more, it automatically takes you to the Nike website wherein you can directly purchase. So this is actually the. So if you see, I clicked on the you know see more, and it has taken me to their website wherein I can scroll and I can make a direct purchase. So this is what I actually wanted to show you people by showing you the story of Nike that. you know there are a lot of brands which are using you know stories to directly sell to people so that means that you know you don't have to type www.nipa.com and then select the product category so you have a story you know which is promoting a product of your liking maybe and then you know all of a sudden you know when you click on see more you know you land up on the page where the purchase can be made So you know, so apart from being appealing to the customers, the stories are being used to sell products directly. So you know, when we are using such basic social media features, you know, 
to sell products and services you know it is known as s commerce which is social commerce so you people have heard of e commerce i am sure everyone but now is the time of s commerce which is social commerce so this is how social commerce is done so that's the reason i showed you the story of naifa and now i want to show you an instagram story okay i don't know what has happened to instagram just give me a second so this is the instagram page of discovery channel india so if you look at their story you know because stories like we said originated from snapchat but today the most popular consumption and the maximum number of stories are consumed on instagram so this is the instagram page of discovery channel india and if i click here look at this story okay so you will get to see akshay kumar in this it's a very nice story if you read through it this is discovery channel So did you see the story of uh, Disney Channel India? Yes ma'am. Yeah. So you know so we saw two stories one of which was a Facebook story wherein Nike was trying to sell you know through a story and the second one was uh, Instagram story the Disney Channel one wherein the Disney Channel is trying to promote its product Uh, it's one of its uh, programs into the wild using a story so stories we are using for business purposes because promotion is also a part of business so these stories can be used for promotion as well as for direct selling and when we are using the basic features of social media like stories or the news feed you know to sell products directly to the customers so we call it s commerce which is social commerce so just like you have e commerce today social commerce is really really picking up very very fast okay so do you guys understand what i'm saying yeah okay so let's move forward yeah. to presentation okay great i'll just share my screen with you just give me a second is my screen visible no ma'am yes ma'am no ma'am yes ma'am no ma'am no ma'am Now? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma who is this one person who is able to see my screen even without sharing? Hmm? Am I just see? Okay. Oh. But now you can, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so. stories we have discussed in lot of details and this is the nike story which i just showed you on this thing okay influencer marketing you know very important topic so how many of you understand what is influencer marketing basically the blogging one comes under influencer basically marketing. what you please be a little Blog. louder bloggers are the influencer marketing fashion bloggers bloggers travel. are the influencer marketers no not always not always and they the famous youtubers do brand promotions karte uh, hain what is influencer marketing actually influencer marketing is when you have replaced the brand ambassadors you know like you have amitabh bachchan promoting a particular advertisement and so on on television or on print media so we used to call it as brand ambassador So once you replace your brand ambassadors with people who are more interactive, you know, with their target audience, and who give a better peep into the lifestyle of their target of their lifestyles to their target audience, you know, so that is and that person is an influencer. You know what a brand ambassador does is like, for example, Amitabh Bachchan ji comes for a particular advertisement. They do advertisement shoot in a studio or at a location. Go and after that, their job is over. 
but when an influencer tries to promote a product or a service whatever ad shoots have to be done are done apart from that in his real life how and where he is using that particular product he keeps on adding that post on his social media handles mostly instagram and uh, they explore like a professional yeah and so their target audience that is their followers they are able to at a glance you know look at that okay so he promoted a particular cold drink yesterday so today he was drinking it while he was on a picnic and yesterday i saw a post where that bottle was kept in his office and the third post is his refrigerator is filled with all those bottles so their job is not over you know once they have done a shoot for a particular advertisement rather they give a sneak peek into their lives to their followers and tell stories about how they are using that product every day and how they are liking it etc so influencer marketing basically is a billion dollar industry today and it was one of the fastest mediums of digital marketing to have gained so much of importance because when this concept of influencers came up on instagram it clicked with target audience like this you know because there is always a desire for people to look into the life of their influencers their celebrities you know more and more and more so they are always not satisfied with just one advertisement done on print or television and then the brand ambassador disappears so it is one of those forms of digital marketing which was very quick to reach a billion dollar industry so uh and we have concept of macro influencers and micro influencers so micro influencers are the people who have a few thousand of followers like less than 10000 followers if you have so we will call you a micro influencer whereas macro influencers are the ones who have more than 10000 followers so very very important for you to understand uh, this that uh, by 2020 influencer marketing is on target to become a 10 billion dollar industry you know guys 10 billion dollar is a very very huge number and uh, then you know uh, you have influencer marketing you know which is happening uh, on uh, various channels like youtube instagram snapchat and millennials and generation z that is my generation and your generation are the ones you know which are very very prominent in uh, embracing influencer marketing and this happens in all the industries and because of this brands can work with influencers to expand and you know expand their reach and bring greater engagement however let me tell you one thing point blankly that yes influencer marketing uh, is something you know which happens in all the industries but the most important industries you know which have actually uh, reciprocated very very well to influencer marketing is the fashion industry beauty and cosmetics and the food blogging industry so these are the two industries you know where the reciprocation of uh, the target audience towards influencers has been most well accepted so long post vlogs and uh, you know lifestyle photos uh, highlighting the product which i just explained to you by taking an example of a cold drink bottle and instagram snapchat stories you know they share unique and very immersive experience so with the multitude of content ideas building relationship with influencers is very very vital for future businesses i want to ask you people do you people have a favorite influencer on instagram or any other social media channel yes ma'am who has okay uh-huh. and who is the influencer that you follow who uh-huh. are your favorite influencers Come on. Anyone who follows any celebrity, you people follow? Yes, ma'am. Who who do you follow? Ma'am Virat Kohli. Sorry. Ma'am Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli. And what is the type of products that Virat Kohli promotes? Ah, uh, ma'am, sports product, every type of product. I uh, can't hear you. Sorry. Energy bar. Ma'am, sports, bar sports product, uh, shoes, Puma. mainly you are um, uh, clothing clothing apparel can't hear you i'm so sorry ma'am energy uh, drinks and all energy mm. drinks yes i remember that he promotes energy drinks and what else does he promote ma'am puma that, puma uh, shoes ma'am he has puma, puma yes he's clothing yes, clothing yes, brand wrong and ma'am also fitness uh, supplements watches, watches ma'am smartphones okay. 
विराट कोहली ट्रैवल इन चीप एंड स्टफ यस मैम अ बजट ट्रैवलिंग यस एनीवन फॉलोस लाइक गौरव तनेजा मैम वन अ सोशल वर्कर और समवन यू नो हु इज डूइंग आवर वर्क इन द फील्ड ऑफ सोशल दिस थिंग एनीवन फॉलोस दैट एनीवन Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go on, guys. Yeah. I'm listening to you. Yeah, ma'am. So, I don't know whether does it fall under social or something. So, yeah. my one of my cousins, she's into happiness uh, course and mindfulness. So, she is a trainer. She is a happiness trainer. So, we've been working together, and we, I mean, we have taken this project up. Uh, I mean, me and her. So, she, we are working on that. So, okay, so that is great. But how many followers does she have on Instagram? I mean, how many followers do you have? The followers as of now, she has a subscription of total thousand people currently, because we started doing. Uh, I mean, it this on social media like a month back. Uh, initially, we used to have it on schools and you know offline courses. Uh, she is doing online webinars currently, and uh, I mean uh, we. Put in like three, four videos in a month. So you know, for from last week onwards, we have started to promote it. Actually, you know, through uh, adverts. So not that much into it as of now, but yes, uh, we are you know planning to bring it forward. Okay, but that that's good. So if she has thousand subscriptions, I think that's a very good thing, and you guys can grow this. You know, do you have any brand collaborations also for that? uh we are looking for one uh so uh, we have i mean i have spoken to one of my connects into smile foundation and one of my other cousin she is into uh, i mean she is into education consulting with the government so we have been planning to bring this forward as a new course in collab with nep 2020 so we are trying to get in touch with the government agencies and you know uh, consultancies wherein we can bring this up and apart from that we have a collaboration with some schools a couple of schools that we are continuously working with and not a major big blow but we have not received a big blow as of now ma'am you are not audible actually but you are on mute Guys, you'll have to give me one second. Actually, my laptop is running out of charge, so just give me one second, okay? Interpret. We'll just continue with your discussion. Just give me a Tom. second.
on. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yes, go on. So I was discussing that the monetary part has not happened yet, right? Monetary part, actually, we don't have funding from some anywhere. We are putting in our own resources currently. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I mean, so we have, um, so my brother-in-law, her husband, she, he owns a marketing agency with the name of Multiplier Brand Solutions. So it's into offline retail and whatever resources that we have currently in hand in terms of the team and in terms of monetary backup, we are using uh, Multiplier as our only source of uh, finance and, you know, the team currently. But nothing more than that. Okay. So, yeah, I think that is um, kind of doing influencer marketing the right way. Uh, but I am sure it will take a lot of time. Anyone amongst uh, you all who have like more than about a... Who have more than about a thousand followers on Instagram, anyone? Anish, okay. So, uh, what what does your Instagram page deal with? Um, I'm uh, travel blogging. Sorry, travel blogging. Okay, how many followers do you have? Ma'am, um, I, uh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, it's about um, um, uh, one one six eight. And do you have any brand collaborations? Ma'am, no, ma'am, uh, not yet. Not okay, yet. no problem. So all of you are on the right page, you know, when it comes to influencer marketing and how to go about it. So, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, someone asked me this question that is influencer marketing done only through Instagram? The answer is not really, but then Instagram is the only channel, you know, which have till now shown the maximum metal when it comes to influencer marketing. And in fact, the concept of influencer marketing was started keeping in mind Instagram itself. Okay, so that is the reason, you know, we always associate Instagram market, you know, influencer marketing more with Instagram than any other channel of social media. So now, uh, guys, we'll move forward. I'll just share my screen with you and we'll move forward with the presentation. Okay, so can you see my screen, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we were discussing influencer marketing and the concept of micro and macro influencers. This we had discussed. Okay. So now if you see why I also say that, you know, influencer marketing is like really very important is because, you know, uh, if you see this graph, okay. So this blue, blue graph, the blue line is pertaining to in influencer marketing and this red, uh, you know, one is pertaining to print marketing. So, you know, uh, this is a very authentic research and it's the latest one, you know, in 2020, which is done by Sean Barker. And uh, if you see this, you see that the curve of in influencer marketing, you know, which is shown in blue color is showing an exponential increase Whereas the red one, you know, which is standing for print marketing, you know, if you see, it is very, very stagnant. And not only is it very, very stagnant, it is also at a very low level, you know, whereas the blue one, which is for Instagram marketing is showing an exponential rise. So now, yes, now uh, social media, you know, we also have to apply artificial intelligence to social media we may not really realize it but there are so many features of uh, you know artificial intelligence that we are already applying to social uh, media marketing so that is why we say that you know artificial intelligence is the future of social media marketing and one such feature you know with which all of you are uh, kind of uh, uh, used to or are being exposed to by various brands is the chatbot I'm sure all of you have some or the other experience with chatbots. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yeah. ma'am. So we have like all the, you know, in fact, Facebook Messenger also has a chatbot and, you know, the daily apps which we use for our daily functioning like Groffers and Big Basket and all of these, even Amazon, they have chatbots and it is a technology, you know, which 
is uh, artificial intelligence algorithms and it is something which is done through social media so this is why we say that the latest foundation of uh, uh, artificial uh, latest foundation of social media would be applying artificial intelligence into its various features like a chatbot so one very good example of a chatbot is uh, collect chat you know this collect chat is actually a chatbot which is used to schedule meetings and you know collect leads you know so it is a chatbot which is not just uh, answering the customer queries but it is also helping you in the selling process because it is scheduling meetings for you and it is also collecting leads and similarly you know mastercard has a very advanced chatbot you know so wherein you know the chatbot is so equipped that you know it is able to talk to the customers you know for all the expenditures and finances on its own you know on its various social media channels as well as on its website so that is why you know we say that yes art, you know, this is just one feature that i have spoken to you about uh, which is chatbot there are lots of features of artificial intelligence you know which are being incorporated into social media strategies clear everyone yes okay good okay indrapreet you raise your hand yes do you have a question i have a question is it safe to say that you know uh, social media marketing or maybe any form of digital marketing is successful in today's world because of uh, customer interaction i mean they have a higher uh, customer interaction rate in terms of uh, you know digital prospects so is that the reason that uh, you know digital marketing or any form of marketing in that sense is growing Ah uh, yes, definitely. You know the reason, ah, uh, digital marketing. In fact, social media marketing, or in fact, all the branches of digital marketing, for that matter. You know, they always had an upper hand, ah, uh, as compared to traditional form of marketing, is because of this reason only. You know, because ah, uh, you have customer interaction, which is much more than traditional marketing, and not only customer interaction, the engagement, the feedback. You know, in these channels, is ah uh, much more convenient, yeah. and it is much more. quicker you know like on the spot you know for example when you are chatting with someone on a messenger which is also classified under social media so on the spot you know instant feedback you are able to get you know so this is one of the reasons you know why digital marketing has always had an upper hand over traditional mediums of marketing is why because of greater customer interaction greater engagement etc so i believe that was the reason that before corona because corona coming into the picture you know the traditional marketing has lost the pace but uh, i mean before it was there in the market i mean corona so during the last few months we were the traditional marketing was trying to get into augmented reality based uh, programs to increase their uh, you know or maybe to compete with the digital marketing space so maybe that would have been the reason uh well i would not say that you know it's because of corona that augmented marketing uh, augmented reality into digital marketing has started picking up it was always there it's just that the realization yes, has now started coming it was coming always there because so, the, uh, customer interaction was high my uh, point was that uh, traditional marketing got into i mean uh, augmented reality got introduced into traditional marketing because it was losing its edge over digital marketing and uh, or maybe it was losing its edge over retail and you know it could not be possible because corona coming into the picture augmented reality could not be you know integrated properly into traditional marketing why why do you say so that uh, corona would have been a hindrance for incorporating augmented reality uh, i would say that because most of the brands so i have been i mean i would say have been uh, fortunate enough to have tasted both the waters not completely but yes i have few experience in both the domains um i would say that now currently brands are you know uh, not very uh, feeling very safe to you know invest more into retail space rather they are investing most of their resources into digital uh, marketing or maybe you know digital form of their marketing okay so when we talk of retail space the parallel that comes is uh, e-commerce not digital yeah, marketing i am not talking about uh, e-commerce or digital commerce i am talking about retail into uh, in consideration of the retail market the offline market that i'm talking Ah uh, well, you know that would be a different topic because that is when you are comparing organized retail with e-commerce. 
Yeah. So you know, and digital marketing we are using for promoting e-commerce products also. At the same time, we are using digital marketing to promote the retail products also. Mm -hmm. So this does not really have an influence on digital marketing ecosystem, but yes, it does have an influence on organized retailing versus the e-commerce industry. So the comparison fits better there. Digital marketing is promoting both type of products. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it comes as a hindrance or as a protagonist on. any of the forms of digital marketing but yes when we compare retail versus e-commerce i do understand it would be one of the factors yeah. thank you okay great so moving forward now now we will see how we sell using social media so the topic you know that we are discussing is uh, you know uh, doing business through social media so business primarily getting down to the layman terms is selling right so now let me see how we sell using social media so before i discuss that i want to understand from all of you that how many of you have had the experience of selling through social i mean purchasing a product through social media through facebook or through instagram or you know through snapchat but uh, through social media not through uh, amazon or any other e-commerce website so anyone has purchased ever and how was the experience etc स्टोरी Uh, I saw. I found that she also sells the uh, products. Also, the like canvas drawing today uh, is very much trend trending. So from there, I bought that canvas packing put all and stuff and pastel colors recently. Okay. By then, only Maria. watching from this Instagram first time. Instagram. Okay, that's good. Vanchika, you also wanted to share something about your purchasing experience on social media. Vanchika, go on. okay so she's gone so now let's come to, let, let me just show it to you that you know how i'm just going to share my screen with you and i'll just take example of uh, this uh, brand called as maybelline you know which sells through their home page using lot of augmented reality on facebook so i'll just share my screen just give me a second everyone So can you guys see my desktop uh my screen Yes ma'am Yes ma'am okay. So let me just see this Now this is the page for uh Maybelline India so if you see this is a facebook page for maybelline india so you know like we saw in nika nika was able to sell its products using story so this is maybelline page for india i mean it's maybelline new york but this page is particularly for india if you can see here it's maybelline india so they have this feature you know which says shop now so when you click on shop now so it takes you to this page now this is the page you know which is going to apply a lot of uh, you know what should i say uh, augmented reality so if you click on explore more you will come on this page so all you have to do is that you have to take a selfie or you know maybe a close up picture of yours and or a live camera also you can start so either you can start a live camera or you can upload your picture here and once you upload your picture here what will happen is that you know you will be able to apply different shades of lipstick on your face and uh, you know you will be able to judge that which shade is suiting you better and then directly from this page you will be able to make a purchase so does it sound interesting and exciting Ma'am, it's yeah. like uh, using yeah, the sure. lens card. Yes, ma'am, it's interesting. Ma'am, sorry, like, Sharon is talking. Yeah, go on. Ma'am, it's like using the lens card for like buying uh, the 
glasses like that lens cut yes paper. lens cut was first one probably to have used this feature but uh, this feature you know which uh, these apps are providing you know like uh, this maybelline one you know they are much more i would say advanced, advanced. and uh, yes okay. lens cut i remember was the first one to have first come up maybe. with this thing you know wherein you could virtually try a glass on your face and you could see that you know if that particular model yes, suits yes. you or it doesn't kind of yes, suit you so you know that was limited till there that is to take a decision that you know whether this suits me or it doesn't but now these brands are going ahead because after making a dis purchase decision you can also make a purchase directly so that is what is very important you know that without having to log on to any e-commerce website or without even having to go to the main website of the brand through social media itself you can make a purchase yes so this is the very very important points is it clear uh, everyone but ma'am yeah. uh, yeah. even when we search on social media it eventually directs us to the website yep. so we have to go there yeah. Uh, yeah i don't think we can directly make purchases yeah. through social media yo that is known as direct purchasing only that is known as social commerce uh, see there are two three ways that you can make a purchase one is you go to amazon you search for maybelline lipsticks and whatever discounts and schemes amazon is providing you you can purchase using them which is known as e-commerce second is you can go to www.maybellineindia.com you can search for whatever you want to you can make a purchase directly on their website and not through amazon that is also e-commerce then is you go to facebook or you go to instagram while scrolling in the news feed you come across a product you know which you really like and then you say buy now after that wherever they take is their headache but you eventually reach the direct billing page of that product so that is social commerce why because number one you have landed there not through their own website number two you have not landed there because of a google search engine number three you have not landed there because of a e-commerce website like amazon or flipkart and number four because you have landed there because of a social platform so it is known as social commerce yes the transaction the financial gateways and the interface are there on their website also only which is very true but how have you been directed there what is the source of that purchase the source of that purchase is social media that is why it comes under social commerce did you understand that tanya uh yes ma'am and also uh, like when we search something on google we see these ads on social media like when I, if i search some cosmetics and next yeah. time i open for facebook yeah. i can see related products over there so is it also a part of social media selling yes because actually there the reference is google so google is sending to you so to you to the social account and from social account you are landing on the billing page it is social commerce only but then you know when we do attribution studies you know which i am not sure if you people are aware of is where do you attribute a sale would you attribute that sale to google or through or to facebook will be a very big debate over there so yes but uh, as far as if you use my judgment it is social commerce only is it clear tanya yes ma'am okay Thank great you. so now uh, i'll move forward with my presentation can you see my screen everyone yes ma'am yes ma'am okay, yes ma'am so selling using social media we have discussed like we took the example of uh, this uh, maybelline thing now social media has been long used to generate engagement brand awareness brand recall value 
but it is not now becoming a solid channel for driving direct sales and brands are provided with necessary tools to promote their products on social media and get sales so for example is facebook pixel how many of you know what is facebook pixel or have you used facebook facebook pixel anyone okay so what is a facebook pixel it is a code you know which if you have a business page on facebook you know so you can generate a code by going into facebook business manager and this code you can paste on your website so whenever a sale will happen on your website which has been diverted to your website from facebook it will be captured so you will be able to very easily attribute that this is a part of my social commerce sale and this is a part of my e-commerce sale and this is a part of my google search sale do you understand that so facebook pixel is a very new feature it is just a code you know which you can originate from facebook business page by going to business manager and you have to copy paste it on your website so whether you have made your website on wordpress or wix or wherever and it will start tracking which sales are happening because of facebook and which sales are happening because of e-commerce so it will be able to distinguish the attributes of social commerce from e-commerce so this is the reason we use uh, features like facebook pixel everyone understood that facebook pixel it's a little technical i know but it's a great feature for social media marketing everyone understood that okay great so now moving forward you know so this is a very important uh, uh, you know discovery which i would rather say that according to cleaner perkins about 55% of people who found a product on social media purchased it later so among social media channels facebook is the leading platform for product discovery instagram and pinterest closely catching up in the trend as well so the very important finding over here is that uh, 55% of people you know who actually uh, once liked a product on social media or which once actually found a product on social media you know later they came back and they actually purchased it okay so this is a very important statistics and i'll show it to you graphically also here so if you see that what are the social media channels you know which we use for uh, uh, finding out products it comprises of facebook for product discovery that means for locating products so it's facebook followed by instagram pinterest twitter and snapchat and if you see the pie chart on the right hand side it says that social media discovery driving purchases so 55% that means 44 which is in dark blue and 11 in light blue so these are the people who actually purchased the product once they saw it on social media and they kind of liked it and the remaining 45% never purchased but that's all right 100% people will never purchase so the fact that 55% of the people you know who liked the product on social media and came back to purchase it it's a very very good statistics and that is why i say that social media is the future of business now this is a uh, you know a social media because in the last slide i told you that social media you know it was a channel which was long used to generate awareness and the brand recall value etc so uh, now it is being used for sales so how uh, dabur used social media particularly youtube and a website uh, to organically basically to improve their brand awareness and brand recall value is given in the next slide which is a very small case slit so i expect all of you to read it once and then i will be uh, discussing it with all of you okay so i just want all of you to just read it once okay this i'm giving you 2 minutes by the clock to read this and then i will be discussing this
have you guys read it all of you yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so who will explain to me what are we talking about here what is happening anyone so what are what what happened there actually there is a one campaign run by uh, dabar where they shown that cancer patients like yeah. uh, they don't have hair matlab uh, they lost hair Be due to louder to... ekta i can't hear you so they lost their hairs during chemos so yeah. they promote that that you are beautiful like uh, even if you don't have hair so people are get matlab uh, emotionally connected to through that campaign and they search for the product more and more yeah so basically they actually you know the major uh, thing that you have to understand here is that dabar was trying to rebrand itself you know they were trying to because they had a very traditional image and the major target audience was always very traditional women so they wanted to get rid of the traditional image and they wanted to modern. change their image to modern brand but you know using traditional mediums of advertising and promotion they were not able to do that so because they were not able to do that so they resolved to social media so when you come on social media with an agenda you have to have an objective behind it so they thought you know we will promote these cancer patients and create videos and organic websites and everything for them so they did that now the point that you have to understand here is that if you would have seen you know it is written in that small case let that their brand awareness and their recall value you know increased by 200 something percent you know for a particular yes. age group so the point that we are trying to make here is that when traditional mediums of marketing were not able to uh, help dabar you know to change its image as a traditional from a traditional brand to a modern brand so media was able to do it in very little amount of money because for creating a youtube channel you don't really need too much money and the website was also organic in nature so you know in almost like nil investment you know social media in a very short span of time was able to increase their brand awareness recall value which they were aiming to do with the traditional marketing since a very long time so this was the success of social media over there did you Ma understand everyone ma'am yes ma yes dimanya uh, i want to add up something yeah. also uh, like in marketing and in, if i talk about selling also on social media nowadays brands are most of most of the brands are not selling but selling by connecting emotional cord so in this dawar vatika also social media was the platform no doubt but by using that social media platform the content they were delivering was that uh, emotional cord that was the rude root brave and beautiful that was the direct uh, hit to the customers mind and that's how uh, they were beautifully rolled up with a good amount of viewers and uh, customers by using social media by only connecting the emotional route yeah that i agree uh, dimane because that's how selling is actually done is by capturing the emotional quotient of people whether it is digital marketing or traditional marketing but that's how we actually sell you know and dabar you know is a very age old brand of india so anyways it has a very very deep emotional connect with the the consumers in india okay so let's move forward with the presentation everyone so okay so moving forward augmented reality are you able to see my screen no ma'am no okay no. just a second are you able to see my screen now 
yes 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 okay yes, so now coming to augmented yes, reality though we have uh, seen great examples of augmented reality how gopro used it and how coca cola used it but you know one thing is very important for all of you to understand that these instagram filters you know which we uh, kind of use almost in our everyday lives to look better in our selfies and stuff you know these are nothing but an application of uh, augmented reality so we may not realize but you know when we are using our instagram filters we are using augmented reality and uh, it is possible to give your face different looks through hit and click photos etc so while it hasn't been used to market products yet but uh, but i uh, somehow think that now it is being used because uh, the coca cola example the virtual uh, drinkable commercial that we saw in the beginning of the session and at the same time the gopro video which we you know saw they were actually using augmented reality for uh, branding and advertising purposes so this is augmented reality so these are the instagram filters you know which we are using every now and then we don't really realize it but this is actually based on ar now we have spoken lot about uh, you know uh, the uh, bright side of social media social commerce this that etc but now we also have to you know kind of see the dark side of social media that to, you know the dark side of social media is very very important for us because this is what the businesses have to keep in mind before framing social media marketing strategies so what are these dark sides of social media that i want to talk about is number one is privacy issues so how many of you feel that yes you do have uh, privacy issues with the uh, social media yes ma'am yes, everyone ma has yes, we do have you know uh privacy issues and one of the biggest uh, flip side uh, you know in dealing with privacy was the cambridge analytica controversy so do you guys know what it is no no it was probably one of the biggest controversies pertaining to social media and privacy issues you know which has ever happened in mankind you know it was in 2018 when uh, uh, facebook you know had a collaboration yes. with this uh, research firm which is known as cambridge analytica and without the permission of the us users you know it had revealed uh, data of uh, millions of users to cambridge analytica and cambridge analytica used that users data for uh, profiling purposes so they divided the users into different profiles and then these profiles were used for political marketing and as a result of which you know the political decisions of the users were biased and uh, they were influenced and uh, someone uh, you know which otherwise people would not have wanted to win elections won the elections so this is like one of the biggest scandals you know in social media which has ever happened and uh, millions of uh, and uh, then there was uh, an ex employee you know who after resigned from cambridge analytica he then spoke in the media about this that yes you know facebook did sell us data and which we used for political influ uh, for influencing the political choices of people and uh, then uh, there is a lawsuit you know which is going on against facebook since then and it was last year when mark zuckerberg actually confessed that yes they had revealed the data so it is one of the biggest cases which has happened ever in the history of mankind you know where the ma'am all uh, is being the cost of uh, data getting leaked yeah ekta you want to say something yeah on on the same case there is one documentary i watched yesterday only on netflix the yeah. social dilemma yes. so where they explained uh, all the scenario and the facebook employee he came and confessed all, all the loopholes what that was there correct. in their facebook and youtube uh, youtubes that so, is correct ekta yes so you were but th of... that was like a mind boggling uh, documentary which literally matlab uh, uh, has a bad a face louder, of... uh house uh, matlab it's a re really matlab ki kitna matlab bekar bhi hota hai social media ka effect wo usme dikhaya hai so it was <laughs> 
yes ekta you are really right and uh, yes social media it's it's a dark place to be in but why we are discussing is not to scare anyone but we are discussing this because tomorrow when we start using social media for business purposes you know we have to keep all these factors into mind that you know because if we ignore these factors you know it can very uh, badly in a reverse way impact our businesses so that's the reason yes ekta i completely agree to you then definitely cyber bullying has anyone unfortunately been ever exposed to cyber bullying no ma'am good among you raise your hand do you have a case of being cyber bullied yes ma'am jatin you want to say something guys cyber bullying is very very common you know and the reason that none of you are raising your hand is probably because you have gotten so used to cyber bullying that you have started realizing that this is cyber bullying this is the only thing i can say otherwise i can never uh, trust that you know i have 48 people attending this session and none of them have had a case of cyber bullying either you don't want to share it which i respect and which i will not force you to share it also but then if 48 students you know today of your age generation z if they tell me that you know we've never been cyber bullied or we have never cyber bullied anyone you know i will not take it either you are getting so used to being cyber bullied that it hardly looks like cyber bullying to you now if someone body shames you on a social media platform it is cyber bullying and this is the mildest example that i have given and the kind of people you know who are getting into depression and the kind of children you know who are committing suicide so many tiktok stars very recently committed suicide all these are just a backlash of uh, cyber bullying so please get more conscious of it read more about cyber bullying and please uh, take all the necessary measures which are required to protect yourself from cyber bullying and at the same time do not cyber bully other people also so you know the fact that for every question that i have asked 7 8 9 10 people have always raised their hand but for cyber bullying i don't even have one single hand raised it is because you have accepted cyber bullying and which is not the right thing to do okay so conflict of ideas you know sometimes you know the social media always puts us into conflict of ideas and uh, a lot of conflict of ideas are there these days you know uh, on social media with half of the world supporting uh, sushant singh rajput and half of the world supporting riya chakraborty and half of this world supporting ncb and cbi and half of the world supporting maharashtra police and then you know half of the world supporting bjp and half of the world supporting congress so there is always a conflict of opinions it becomes very uh, dangerous when it starts impacting your business and in that case i have this example of amazon india you know they are always into some or the other controversy so very recently you know they came around came out with these floor mats you know which had our gods printed on them so if you see here you know vishnu ji and brahma ji and lot of indian gods were you know kind of uh, were painted on the floor mats and on the foot mats and we know in india how we respect our gods and how we keep their idols in our homes and uh, using foot mats with a uh, vishnu ji printed on them is just out of the question and so this this guy you know anshul saxena who posted these pictures and then there was an entire campaign okay so i don't have the picture of campaign here so there was an entire campaign which is a very recent news before lockdown that i'm telling you so there is an entire uh, you know campaign which started hashtag #boycott amazon so they lost a lot of their subscriptions and stuff like that you know and they then they apologized obviously but then you know social media so has lot of dark sides so and boycott karna is the easiest thing to do boycott bollywood boycott alia bhat boycott amazon so that's the easiest thing you do can do through social media so as a business person you have to be very conscious that none of your actions are actually letting you being boycotted by your target audience so this is the thing and uh, then definitely you know according to report by morgan stanley you know india has 400 million millennials you know and which is like you know me and you which we are making up like 1/3 46% not 1/3 half of the world population and we genuinely don't like to shop the way our parents did or they do you know 
uh, going to a retail outlet and having a look at six jackets and chooses choosing one amongst that you know we like to have a look at about 600 jackets before we actually try and purchase one you know so Yes, yeah, so Mar Morgan Stanley does support our data and there's some brands I'm going to talk to you guys about in just two minutes and then I want to get down to the doubt session. So some brands, you know, which always have their social media marketing strategy on point number one, Starbucks, you know, so their Facebook account provides information. They have different uh, objectives for different social media accounts. And that's exactly how social media marketing has to be done. So they have Twitter for building relationship and Instagram for aesthetically beautiful pictures they share, you know, so Starbucks is very, very popular on all the three channels, Facebook, where they share information, Twitter, where they build relationship building exercises, engagement exercises, and Instagram, you know, where in they put like uh, aesthetic beautiful picture so if you see at this picture this is an instagram picture it's such a beautiful picture for of a cup of coffee and if you see here it has 1,29,429 likes so i'm just trying to show you the popularity of a dummy picture which does not even have a model in it you know so this is the kind of, uh, you know, social media game, you know, their social media game is always on point. And similarly, another brand, you know, which always have the right social media marketing game is Netflix has never gone wrong, wrong with social media. So, you know, in the times of pandemic, you know, so they came out with this, which is a very, very beautiful thing. If you read that, you know, uh, Netflix is saying that if you are feeling really stressed and anxious, talking through the realities of this strange and confusing time, which is the pandemic, uh, can be super helpful starting tomorrow at 4 p.m. We are launching Wanna Talk About It, a weekly live series on our Instagram about how to take care of yourself during global pandemic. So basically this shows the sensitivity of a brand towards its consumers that all of us are so confused, so scared all the time during the pandemic and hence they have mental health specialists free of cost talking to you people through Instagram live, you know, and then name the session. Do you want to talk about it? So they're encouraging people to, you know, take out their pandemic emotions and talk about it and these are the things you know which helps to bring uh, build in brand loyalty so a lot of social media in 2020 revolves around coronavirus so in such situation netflix used social media to help people connect with their audience in a more meaningful way so they have launched this instagram live series where people can connect with the mental health experts and you know you know and ask questions and this is what actually makes customers loyal towards you when you uh, sensitively you know in a very sensitive way you are able to think about your customers so this is a brilliant strategy for fostering customer loyalty and improving brand image and uh, yes start meaningful conversations because this is a very very difficult time for all of us so it could be a talk show it could be a live question and answers it could be a social media post but something you know which connects with your customers and starbucks and netflix you know when it comes to social media they always have their marketing game on point so this is buying directly on social media maybelline in india we've already discussed that so that's about it from my end guys now we have 15 minutes i think so please uh, we can have a look at questions and answers anyone has questions for me did you like the session number one yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma okay great so did you learn something new yes, today Really yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Very fruitful. So now, do you have any doubts for me? Can we get down to discussions? Um, do you have any doubts? Ma'am, yes, yes, ma yes, one yes, question. Ma ma what measures YouTube have taken Sorry? as the target? Ma'am, what measures? I can't hear you. Please, can you be a bit louder, please? Am I audible? Uh, very little. I'm just a minute. Um, now, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Ma'am, I'm saying ma what measures YouTube have taken at the time of global pandemic, ma'am? Um, as Instagram has, um, YouTube, ma'am, at YouTube. the time of global pandemic, um, as uh, Instagram has come up with Reel after the begin of this uh, TikTok, Instagram had came into lead with Reel and not YouTube. And there was a recent campaign YouTube have come up with where they said that they have come up with some few changes in YouTube platform. So, ma'am, that I want to know, ma'am, what changes were there that they have come up with after? 
adapt uh, that, that they are thinking and then in post pandemic these things we will do what has youtube done post pandemic like yeah. instagram has come up with reels that's what you yes, said ma let me ask ma what they going to do ma'am and what they See, are doing okay so right let now. me explain this to you uh, reels has not come out because of pandemic reels has come out because tiktok was banned and social media these brands like instagram netflix you know they are such opportunists that they do not ever lose a business opportunity so when tiktok was banned in india and it was being banned in us now it is formally banned in us also and today economic times says that tiktok china is closing tiktok only today's economic times news i am telling you today morning okay so when tiktok was closed there was a void in the world of social media that void was of short videos so like in the beginning of the session i had discussed that video marketing is very very important and that is the reason i showed you videos of coca cola and gopro so short videos are still better then the long videos because of the jellyfish retention memory model i discussed at the beginning of the session so tiktok almost had a monopoly of 6 years in this space of creating short videos now whatever political controversies or agendas tiktok gets banned in the two biggest markets in the world india and the us so instagram saw this as an opportunity that for 6 years we were not able to enter into this field because tiktok had a monopoly so they came up with reels which gave them business like this and there are certain changes in reels versus tiktok tiktok videos used to be of 45 seconds reels is only of 15 seconds so the reception of reels with generation z and millennials is much higher than that of tiktok because again of the retention span which is 15 seconds so reels was an opportunity which was grabbed by facebook uh, sorry in facebook yeah instagram same thing since facebook has purchased instagram so to take that market which for 6 years tiktok was not leaving it has got nothing to do with the pandemic youtube does not have to do anything with the pandemic the brands which promote on youtube should come up with strategies like netflix talking to mental health specialists etc to retain loyal customers and to expand their customer base youtube does not have to do anything the brands which promote on youtube have to do things and reels was not an outcome of pandemic it was an outcome of tiktok getting banned and instagram taking that opportunity Did you guys understand the background of reels? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do we have another doubt, anyone? Uh, ma'am, ma I have. Uh, Manchika, go on. Manchika, go on. Uh, ma'am, I just want to understand the micro influencer and the uh, yeah. micro influencers yeah okay so you know you know that you become an influencer or you are called as an influencer only if you have lots and lots of followers you know like bollywood celebrities have 20 million followers 5 million followers etc so they are macro influencers because they have too many followers okay if you have less than 10000 followers you are called as a micro influencer so you are still an influencer but you have little less not little like really less followers which is 10000 followers so less than 10000 followers you are a micro influencer and more than 10000 followers you are a macro influencer okay thank you yeah because after 10k we get uh, a swipe up link sorry when we reach 10k followers then instagram give us a swipe up link which where we can promote to brand uh you can enter into brand collaborations after becoming a micro influencer yeah yes. but, but you we do could not, not get paid uh, for having followers ma'am dimanya yeah dimanya ma'am i also am having question yeah. uh, just like umang asked uh, like abhi uh, if we talk about recently uh, instagram bhi bahut sare features ke sath aaya and then uh, during your other sessions also facebook was also coming with a uh, like removing the like button or the heart button and many many features so just like that the doubt is ki youtube jo jaise social platform hai to 
पोस्ट कोविड जैसे यूट्यूब भी बीच में अभी नॉट ड्यूरिंग कोविड बट प्री कोविड वो फीचर्स के साथ आया था स्टोरी फीचर पहले नहीं था यूट्यूब पे सिर्फ इंस्टा पे था फेसबुक पे था बट यूट्यूब ने आया तो आफ्टर ड्यूरिंग लॉकडाउन या फिर पोस्ट कोविड कोई और ऐसी पॉलिसी या फिर यूट्यूब ने कोई फीचर लेके आया हो नो लाइक आई सेड यूट्यूब हैज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विद पेंडेमिक द ब्रांड्स विच प्रोमोट ऑन यूट्यूब हैव टू चेंज पॉलिसीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द पेंडेमिक and youtube coming out with the stories feature is just because its competitors are there in that space now today's press release says that linkedin will come out with the stories which you know what will linkedin do with stories i don't understand why is it yes, even it a professional platform yeah so youtube has got nothing to do with the pandemic as such it it is just trying to explore its competitive space because all the other competitors are doing so so you cannot lag behind that's the only okay case. thank you ma'am uh, ma'am i have a question yes ekta uh, i'm tanya ma'am tanya okay, okay go on uh, so the uh, when this uh, covid and uh, you know black lives matter and other movement started there were arguments that uh, uh, some experts said that brands uh, are only meant to sell they are there to sell their products and uh, while others argued that they should uh, since they have the power they should also stand and uh, show that they are supporting these movements uh, whereas uh, from brand's perspective i think if they support any movement like black lives matter they are in a way going against the constitution so what is the ideal way in which they can respond to and is it any way by any way helping them sell their products Okay Tanya your question is very valid but you know most of the good brands which you see these days you know they would probably not be focusing too much on selling because even as a marketing person i feel that if customer engagement happens if you have loyal customers selling will automatically happen so i am not sure where you read this or who said this the brands are only there for selling no brands are there for existing for having awareness for having a recall value for having a loyal customer base and then selling automatically happens so the best approach to this uh, movements like black life matters etc is to support them because if you support them and if you show your sensitive and emotional side to your customers they will become loyal and the prospect customers will become customers this is exactly what we discussed in the netflix case uh, just about 2 seconds back wherein the netflix was showing its sensitivity to the customers by making them talk to mental health experts free of cost so brands which do that you know which uh, have an emotional connect with the customers the selling automatically happens for them and any brand you know which focuses only on selling i am not even sure if that can exist beyond a certain point in time no definitely not in the age of social media uh and ma'am particularly like in the case of facebook where uh, employees were very angry that uh, mark zuckerberg he's not uh, reacting or taking any political stance when it came to trump whereas twitter did so what should be like he is the president so the company can't uh, go against it and outlash him so what should be the ideal thing what is your See, uh, mark zuckerberg i don't think though i'm so uh, you know saying it on a social media platform but uh, i don't think he's an ideal person to benchmark your learning from you know so he has made lot of mistakes he has paid for lot of mistakes cambridge analytica i think was a very sensitive issue which i just discussed with you and the entire world is suffering because of that so mark zuckerberg ha- has always been known for making wrong policies uh, promoting wrong policies lot of times as per as my understanding goes and i don't think he is a, a person from whom we should be taking employability lessons because uh, i don't think i've ever read so anywhere that you know he seems to be a supremely great employer in any which ways so yes he tries to keep mum and you know he tries to uh, he's a great opportunist actually you know like tying up with jio and um, instead of ratan tata ji you know to capture the entrepreneurial space of india again you know these are uh, very very big uh, things that he does to which shows that he's very opportunist in nature and he has always been time and again kept himself shut on very 
very important global issues why because his social media platform facebook probably is one of the biggest platform which through which a fake news and a lot of anti social issues you know they emanate and without any algorithm checking so i don't think mark zuckerberg is a great example to learn leadership from that's my personal opinion though ma'am just uh, one minute have i answered yes ma'am thank oh. you so much it was really yes rahul ma'am who's that i can't hear you ma'am it's me umang sorry ma'am umang am i audible yeah go on ma'am it was a question ma'am ma'am that ma'am um, recently few days back there was a news that the uh, social media platform should be controlled ma'am Ma'am, ma I didn't understand, ma'am, that uh, cyber that security. Issue, that is where we are uh, heading towards cyber security issues. Probably, you know, uh, with lot of dissemination of uh, news, you know, today if you see that the chats between two people, be it Mahesh Bhatt or Riya Chakraborty or be it two drug peddlers, is available on social media, and. Uh, i mean apart from all the investigations which are going on it is a very big question that how can someone's private chats be leaked on places like social media so when statements like this are made it is probably hinting at enforcing cyber security norms which uh, as of now are really not existing in a country like india so okay ma'am जतिन इट कुड बी ग्रेट इफ यू टाइप इट एंड सेंड इट बिकॉज आई एम नॉट एबल टू हेयर यू एक्चुअली Okay, sure, sure, ma'am. Anyone else has a doubt? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yes, on in, on Instagram, how these celebs are getting? Um, uh, no, uh, how they are getting like paid? Like uh, I've read somewhere that uh, Priyanka Chopra gets in crore by, uh, for posting one photo or something. So how this? all work that is number 1 because she is priyanka chopra and number 2 because she has millions of followers so when you have millions of followers brands would automatically come to you for brand collaborations and if brands do not come directly instagram through its instagram business associates will send brands to you for uh, so that's an affiliate marketing model so uh, that is number 1 number 2 priyanka chopra has millions of followers so once you have so many followers you know instagram is tracking every single minute of the day so the minute you know you cross a certain level of form uh, you know followers you get that blue tick everyone knows about that blue tick right so the blue yes, tick which you get on instagram after you have a certain number of stipulated formulas uh, followers so after having then you are already an influencer in the eyes of instagram so whatever brand comes that we you want to collaborate with this person you know because he has so many followers you will be given those deals and you will be paid and kelly jenner and all the, they are getting about uh, 1 1 billion uh, dollars paid for one brand promotion on instagram so this is very common for but for that yes these kind of deals go only to celebrities you know but not really to micro and macro influencers but yes i do agree that once you become a certified influencer you do have a lot of scope of making money on instagram yes you do ekta have i answered the question yes okay next Uh, ma'am, okay. recently I noticed on her Instagram handle, mm -hmm. she started promoting all these startups from around the world, and those were particularly from India. And it was after uh, when uh, PM Modi started that Make in India, uh, prom started promoting that Make in India thing. So was it also part of uh, influencer marketing? Do you, I'm not sure if she was paid for Absolutely. it or. Absolutely, she's definitely paid for it. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Surbhi, ma'am.
okay guys so i think we are almost at the end of the session so affiliate marketing is a part of influencer marketing no it's not it's a different field okay, okay. so you can become an affiliate without being an influencer also so affiliate marketing is very different from influencer marketing okay so i guess we've come to the end of the session so i hope you guys like the session Yes, and it was a great interactive session thank you everyone for all your time um, kurbi ma'am are you there let's just hang on in for a second okay just let me check with kurbi ma'am if we can wind up with the session so just just hang on okay hello ma'am am i audible am i audible yes ma'am okay. ma'am i was actually calling you only because uh, uh -huh. wind up with the session yeah so, yeah yeah uh, you know so it was, was very enjoyable very very enjoyable and very uh, experience session i'm 